Greetings, Electrofogy here. I wanted to make a quick video to uh, answer some of the questions that people are asking me in the comments of my videos and in emails and that sort of thing. So we'll call this video the Frequently Asked Questions video. Uh, first question, can I recommend any be good beginner's tutorials for electronics on the web? Well, mm, I have trouble with that because I didn't receive my education on the web. I received it at actual brick and mortar colleges and high schools and that sort of thing. And it's been a long time since I've been in school. So a lot of my technology is out of date. And I'm really not happy with the way that electronics is taught in schools these days. So that's kind of why I'm making these videos. However, there are a lot of good beginner tutorial references on the web. And so, in the description of this video, I have put down links to several of these uh, web resources. I've grouped them in uh, four different categories. First is educational, which includes tutorials and information for beginners and that sort of thing. So check those out. Second is reference material. Now, uh, these are also good for beginners to check out. Um, they're not as hands-on practical as the beginner tutorials, but they contain a lot of good information. Uh, ePanorama is a very good reference. I've always used it a lot. There's some link rod in there because it's a pretty old site, but uh, uh, ePanorama is pretty good. Third group is uh, schematics and general electronic sites. Now these are sites that have all kinds of projects and uh, schematics that you can use and check out. This is for more advanced students to check out uh, because there's not a lot of explanation in these things. It just says this is a good thing to amplify power or something like that and then it gives you a big schematic. Finally, there are just plain cool sites like Hackaday and Make Magazine and my favorite, uh, Instructables. Uh, I go on Instructables as username Exabopper, but I don't put a lot of electronic stuff on there. That's just kind of like my fun projecty life hack stuff. But there's a lot of awesome technical computer electronic projects on there, so check those out too. Now, as far as uh, video references, there are a lot of good videos for beginners, and to see those, what I recommend you do is go to my channel, click on this, and then go down and see who I have subscribed to. These are the people that you are going to want to subscribe to and look at because their videos are great. I've set up that subscription page for you people. I haven't subscribed to any of my personal favorites. Uh, if you go to my favorites page down there, you'll see, you know, World's Strongest Redneck and Epic Meal Time and all that stuff. But um, my subscription page, who I am subscribed to, are the people you're going to want to check out for science. And finally, one thing that you have now as a beginner, and I didn't have, is a thing called Spice. Now, when I was a beginner, they always said, well, what you have to do is get yourself meters and instruments and breadboards and wire and components and put things together, measure them out, build stuff and see how they work. And uh, I did that. And it was a lot of time and trouble and stuff. And you don't have to because you have SPICE programs. These are circuit simulators which allow you to set up a circuit on your computer and experiment on it without actually getting your hands dirty. So, um, there are a lot of good SPICE programs out there. What you need to do is click on this, which is Afrotech Mods SPICE Tutorial. Check that out, download the software, get good at it, and that will really help you as a beginner. Okay, next topic in the Frequently Asked Questions. Uh, I get asked every once in a while, can you help me with this, that, or the other? Can you tell me how to do this, that, or the other? And um, probably not. Uh, I've had a few career changes since college, and I haven't been doing electronics as much as I used to. Uh, and also, I have 
terrible things that uh, afflict my health on a daily basis. I have a family and I have a day job. So I don't really have a lot of time to answer a lot of your questions as much as I'd like to. Uh, once again, that's the reason I put down the uh, reference links and things down in the description of my video. Um, a lot of my technology that I learned is kind of outdated. I mean, these days everybody has broadband cable and uh, fiber optic. So who cares about how broadcast TV works? Who cares about how telephones work? It's all cellular. And uh, quite frankly, I've had a lot of moves since I've uh, uh, graduated from college. So a lot of my electronics lab is all boxed up and in storage or lost to the four winds. So setting something up and experimenting with it is, is kind of difficult for me. So um, your best bet is going to be to check out some of the links to see if they can help you with your problem. Um, third, can I do some videos where I take apart something and explain it or put something together and explain how it works and all that sort of thing? Well, I'd kind of like to do that. I may do that in the future. But the problem is when I work on something electronic, the parts are usually really small, I don't have really good eyesight, and my hands are kind of stubby and clumsy. So when I'm working with my hands, I tend to cuss a lot. So I don't think YouTube would appreciate that kind of thing on their airwaves. So I might, I might not, I'm not really sure. Um, and finally, the donation button. Um, don't worry too much about that. I mean, I put it up on Google so it would be free so that everybody could watch it. I'm not really trying to make any money off of it. If I, you know, I won't say no if you want to give me some money for it, but you don't have to. The reason I set up that donation button is because of home-based internet businesses. Now, uh, you'll see these advertised all over the place, you know, set up your own business, work at home. In fact, you're not going to work. The internet is going to work. You just sit back and watch the money flow in. And that sounds pretty cool. And usually it involves you setting up a website so that you can sell diet pills or uh, try and be a vacation broker or something like that. And it's, there's so many billions of them that uh, you're probably not going to actually make any money. However, um, there's another kind of internet business out there called content farming. And what happens is, you will pay a fee to this content farm company. They will ask you for a topic. And you give them that topic, and the company sets up a website business for you. And that website is just basically a search engine. And it goes around with spider programs, and it grabs internet content from wherever it can that happens to be related to whatever topic you have. And it reposts them on your new website. And then it puts a whole bunch of advertising on that website and it spies on where you go from there. And that's how you make money off the internet on those content farm sites. So what happens is you get these content farms where there's a lot of content on there but it's all taken from other places on the web. This person didn't create any of that content, they just stuck it in there and put advertising on it. So they're making money off of somebody else's work and time. Is that legal? Well, yeah, they put it up on the web for free, so anybody can grab it and do whatever they want with it. Is it right? That I'm not sure of. It kind of narks me, especially since I spend a lot of my time making all these answers and all that sort of thing, and all of a sudden I find my work is being monetized by somebody else. If you Google the name Electrophobia, you're going to see thousands and thousands of hits on thousands and thousands and thousands of websites. And these websites I've never heard of, never seen, and never contributed to. Because a few years ago, I spent a lot of time on Yahoo Answers, answering people's questions and posting it up on Yahoo Answers. And all these content farms went in there, grabbed that content, and put it on their website. So now it's all over the place. So, you know, that's why you'll see that. And it bothers me that my name is all over the place and other people are making money off of my stuff. 
But the one that really got to me was what is a transistor.com? This is a content farm that is also a domain squatter, which means this person grabbed the name what is a transistor.com, made a website on it, put a content farm on it, and has all kinds of ads and stuff, but mainly the thing that's on that website is my YouTube videos. And then, up in the upper right corner, there's this little box, and it says, click here to contact me to see about buying this web domain. So this person's making money off the ads, and they also want to sell the domain to make money that way. Well, the thing is, who is going to want to buy what is a transistor.com except for me? So now this person's making money off of it, and they want me to pay them some more. Well, that was that. I'm like, you know, I'm going to make it so there's a way that people can donate to me if they want to, and they don't have to go through this turkey. So, that's why I put the donation button up there. Right now, I think, uh, as of this recording, what is a transistor.com is just a blank uh, domain parked website. There's no transistorized content on it, as far as I know. Because apparently they only rented this web domain out for like a month or two, and when I didn't bite, they shut it down because they didn't think they were going to make any more money off of it. But, um, that's why I put the domain or the, the uh, donation button on there. But if you're watching this from YouTube, like I say, don't worry about it. I put this up there for you for free so that everybody can watch it. And uh, you don't have to worry about the donations. Anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, I'm going to try and make some more videos. I can't really promise you that they're all going to be electronic related. I mean, I started the web channel to just put down videos that I'm interested in, and uh, uh, whether they're going to be electronic or not, I'm not sure. There probably are going to be a few. So keep watching, and we'll see you later.